Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is former governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker. Governor, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Great to be with you. We are less than a month out from Election Day, and all eyes have really been on those seven key battleground states. Wisconsin is one of them. So I would love to talk about polling, what you're seeing on the ground, what people aren't really recognizing across the country. So let's first start with numbers that just came out yesterday from Emerson College polling, showing an essential tie between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. What are your thoughts? Well, first off, this is part of a pattern. The last two presidential elections here in Wisconsin uh, were uh, just razor thin. Out of about 6 million people, less than 25,000 votes was the margin. So you're talking about as close as you can possibly get you know, less than one vote per ward on average across the state of Wisconsin. It's the difference. In 2016, Donald Trump won and he carried the country. In 2020, he did not. Obviously, he didn't win. And so it's really not just one of the seven. It's probably Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, maybe Michigan in that mix that'll determine who the next president is. Really, really close but not the way you'd expect. I mean, there's two big cities, traditionally Democrat strongholds, but very different areas. Milwaukee is kind of a blue collar, traditional Democrat area, but one in which uh, Donald Trump and his ideas can make some inroads, particularly with some of the voters who feel forgotten, who feel like all the politicians in Washington have kind of forgotten about people like them. Madison, on the flip side, it's more about turnout for the Harris campaign. Uh, this is an area that's uh, the campus town, it's the uh, state government uh, location. So it's a lot like Berkeley. Uh, it's it's really just a matter of how big the turnout is there, how motivated are voters. Because in the last Supreme Court election, 82% of the votes in that county uh, went for the liberal. And so that's really about a big turnout there. The suburbs, like many places around the country, are Republican, but less reliably so than they had been in the past. Whereas on the flip side, the northern part of the state, once uh, kind of a Democrat blue collar stronghold, has now become probably Donald Trump's strongest area in the state of Wisconsin. And again, that'll be looking at turnout there. The biggest thing I'd say for people to look at is mid-sized industrial cities. That's uh, the areas where I won three times. Uh, it's places like Green Bay, Fond du Lac, Racine, Kenosha, Janesville. Those are the cities that could go either way and traditionally have gone for candidates of both parties. Those are the places the winning candidates gonna have to do well in. You gave me a comparison before we jumped on this interview of the cities of Madison, Milwaukee. I'm from another blue wall state, Pennsylvania, and you said they are like Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. They couldn't be more different. So when you're thinking about Donald Trump's ground game in Wisconsin, what do you think the message messaging to, could be or should be to win over these voters? Yeah, I said this about a week ago. I was with uh, President Trump in Wanakee. It's just outside of the city of Madison in Dade County, an area that Donald Trump had never visited before and Republicans rarely visit. I was glad he was there as well as later that day in Milwaukee. And uh, I, I said before he spoke, and I told him this personally as well, that the message for the people there and in other communities like that across the state, uh, where maybe they aren't historically likely to have voted for Republicans, at least not for President Trump in the past, is to say, hey, I get it. You may not like everything he says. You may not like everything, every way he says it. You may not like all his posts on X or other places out there. But it is an undeniable truth that life was better when he was president. Uh, prices were lower here in Wisconsin and across the country. Uh, the border was certainly more secure, which is a big deal when you think about fentanyl and overdose deaths in places like Wisconsin elsewhere across the country. Public safety, particularly violent crime, was less of a threat. So life was better when Donald Trump was president. That is just an undeniable truth. I think it's one of those where uh, people like to point to something maybe he said or did in the past as an excuse uh, that's going to affect their vote. But for the ground game, for people going door to door or on the phone or talking to neighbors or coworkers, I think that's a compelling message to say, hey, in the end, for your family, for yourself, life was better with Donald Trump. And it can be again going forward.